Hello there, Pursuing Freedom friends, and thanks as always for being with us today. We've got a great show for you to inspire you. I've got Delroy Gill and his business partner, Stuart Crowell. They're in the Denver metro area, and they're the team leaders with Live Distinct. These guys are doing an amazing job, not only killing it with their business, but they have an incredible brand. You should definitely be following them on Instagram and everywhere else you can find them to learn from them. They also founded a nonprofit organization called Denver Gents, which is really amazing. And finally, they founded a real estate coaching organization called Agent Daily Dose, where they provide daily text messages to real estate professionals to help you on your journey, your journey towards success and fulfillment. So with no further ado, I'll have Delroy go ahead and introduce yourself first. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us, Aaron. Really appreciate you having us on the podcast and for that great intro. Uh, Delroy Gill, as she said, been in the real estate business for about eight years. Uh, came in at the, so they tell me anyway, the worst time to ever get into real estate. So I went through the whole ups and downs and roller coasters of the recession, uh, pounded the ground and, and survived that escapade. And then a couple of years ago, uh, joined Liv Sotheby's International Realty, where I hang my license now. And about a year and a half ago, two years ago, maybe, I met my business partner here, Stuart Crowell. Yeah. Hey, guys. Thanks, Aaron, for for letting us on here. and. And crashing your party, we uh, yeah, we teamed up uh, in early 2019. Before that, I got into the business in late 2016. Um, kind of bounced around a bit, and then landed over at Live Sotheby's, where we where we are, are a team together. Um, but yeah, I had had the fortune of of getting into the real estate business when I I never thought I would be here doing what I'm doing. But it's been a it's been a blast and a treat to to sell real estate in Denver. So I've got a number of questions for you guys, but first and foremost, I know that one of your goals as we're recording this podcast in 2020 is to close 75 million in volume, which leads me to believe you're not starting from zero because um, that would be a pretty big jump. So <laughs> what my big question for you, for folks that are listening and you know, either they're experiencing some level of success in their journey or, or they're looking forward to having that here in their future... What was the why behind creating a team to begin with? Because Delroy mentioning you've been in the business now for over eight years and Sue's been in it for a couple of years. And I know that there's a lot of people listening that that have that successful business that are already producing at a high level. And when they think about bringing on support or partnerships, there's a lot of fear and insecurity around doing that, around trusting your business with another person. and in general, just having a true partnership, excuse me, that 50-50. So what was it that prompted you, Delroy, to say, yes, I want to share my journey with Stu, who's only been in the business for a couple of years? Yeah. I mean, from the beginning of my career, when I first came in, I was an assistant um, for a few years and and then joined that team um, as kind of a, a, a sub-agent on that team. Um, so I've, I've I've kind of seen that structure from the beginning. And then after that, I was a solo agent and was doing a lot. But you can get very bogged down in real estate very quickly with the, with the amount of tasks that you have to do every single day um, to have a successful business. Um, so I wanted to kind of, when I went on my own, build my own team, had a larger team, probably at the height of it, maybe five agents and then realize that that was something I didn't want to pursue because then you've got to kind of manage all those agents and that's a whole job in itself um, and it takes away from you producing and I like to produce. Um, so kind of let that structure uh, fizzle out and then was just churning by myself, but definitely understood that to cast the widest net possible, um, you do need support, you do need help, whether that be an excellent assistant or a great business partner, um, that was something I just had in the back of my mind. When I got over to Sotheby's, where I am now, um, I saw some of the top producing agents and then just started researching it a lot more. What, no matter what company you're with, most of the top agents that I was researching had some form of a partnership or other agents that they worked with on a support level. And again, just from research and mindset-wise, it's like you need to kind of replicate 
what successful people do, right? So you need to look for something that you know you want to have that goal and reach that level, but what are all the pieces for it? So I kind of always knew that, you know, a team structure for me was probably going to be uh, the highest impact to uh, garnering that success. But then the tricky part is what, what, what everyone stumbles with is how do you find the right person? And luckily, mine was completely organic and stumbled by accident, which is for me kind of great. It's just a kind of a destiny thing. I didn't go out seeking it. It just kind of came about um, into, into the universe for me. Okay. So for you, Stu, then when you got into the business and you were on your own for a little while, did you very quickly have it in your forefront that you would like to find partnership support and build out that team? Or did it also happen organically for you? Um, you know, it, it, it definitely happened organically. I think like I, I like Dell was not seeking out a partner at the time. Um, and that really is, I think part of what led us to be a trusting team right away is there was no other kind of, uh, intention or ambition that the two of us didn't know about. It was, it was purely, you know, organic that we thought, okay, you know, we're going to build on our own and be successful. But if we partner, we're going to be a lot more successful. And that was the whole thought. Um, to me, though, I, I, have, I come from a sports background. I, I ran um, Division One cross country and track and field um, for five years in college. And so I had the benefit of kind of like, I, I knew not from real estate or from other avenues of my life, what it means to be an individual uh, competitor and what it means to be a team competitor. And had always found myself a little bit in between where um, I'm, I'm not the guy who wants to manage, you know, a thousand people and steer a huge boat in any direction. But I, I am the guy who needs people around to, to produce and be my best self. I need people to brainstorm with, people to throw ideas around with, um, and people I trust who can help guide me as I can guide them. So um, for me, it just came about in a way that was organic, but I think in, you know, especially hindsight being 2020, um, certainly where we're at now is I think, you know, the highest use of either of our skills is, is collaborating together. Okay. So one of my questions I have for you, and, and this is a question that I think will resonate with someone who is a top producer and they've tried and tried again to build a team. And they run into these roadblocks because sometimes what happens is that they bring someone onto their team and, that, and then they get frustrated that that team member doesn't run at the same pace they run at and they don't, they don't work as hard or they don't hustle as, as hard or whatever the case might be. And so they, they find themselves just hitting a brick wall. And my question for you guys is, how, how are you similar? And then what are your differences? And was it very... Was it very early on that you realized that your similarities are in that that drive and that hustle and that ambition, and that your differences sort of balance each other out, or do you, are you guys really similar? Because what I've found is that a lot of times that top agent who wants to bring on the team member and then gets frustrated, it's like, well, hey, if they're just like you, they're out there already on their own doing it. They're not looking to be on the team, right? Where with you two as partners you are similar, right? Like you've got a lot of similarities. So how would you guys describe how you, how your differences support one another and how your similarities kind of keep you on the same track? Um, we, so the, our birthdays are one day apart. Okay. Um, same year? So it, no, definitely different years. <laughs> <laughs> a widespread in years. Um, uh, much wider. So I'm 38 years old and Stu is 27 years old. Um, so again, that, that's a big difference in, in, it, in itself, right? And how that plays into our business structure. But we're definitely very similar in terms of our approach. And like the things that you mentioned aren't a factor for us. Like, you know, are you getting it the day to day? Are you producing? Are you, you know, are, are you... Uh, go get her naturally. Are you going? Do I need to check on you and make sure you're working? Like that is not an issue for us. We're both go getters. We both are like pushing um, for things to get done on a day to day. I think where we balance each other is 
like what he said, we're, we're both naturally want to brainstorm. And when we went, before we became business partners, right, as Stuart said, we were kind of managing the events for Denver Gents for the nonprofit first for a year. And in those times, we really found out like what the strengths were and who can leverage their assets the best way. So, you know, I might come up with all these ideas and it's just like, okay, well, let's implement like A, B, C, D, E, F, G to get those things done. Uh, this is my two-year-old. Well, I'm on a podcast, okay? Hi, sweetie. So for the, for the listeners, we are recording this during the height of COVID-19. And therefore, if you have children at home, you know that working without interruption and distraction is not a, re- a reality for us at the moment. That was, that was actually he's, on, he's on lockdown as well. Um, so, but... <laughs> But yeah, no, the, the, uh, so very much the, the idea flow, um, and how we collaborate and what we bring to the table is what kind of makes us gel together really well. So Stuart is all on the micro details. I'm on the bigger picture stuff and we're kind of just blending all of that together. But the vision, um, is very much the same on how we want the end result to be. And I think that, that, that's really our driving factor, right? And that's how we're able to partner up so well is that we don't, we don't care how, how we get there. And if I need to take on the mini task, I'm fine doing that. And if he needs to start thinking big picture, we can switch out because we have the goal at the end to be, the, the end result is always the same for us. That's what we're very, very clear on. Um, and we'll, we're willing to work through the weeds on it. And I think most people, when they get into partnerships, those hangups that they're having of who's going to produce or how am I going to get paid and how are you going to get paid and should, should we do all of that? We, we quickly kind of just let that stuff go by the wayside and it's not of concern to us anymore. And people sometimes just ego can get in the way um, of that structure. So if you just go in saying, yeah, we're going to just at the end result is 50, 50 and we don't care about anything else, but then you're just building a business and you actually end up more operating an actual business than operating a bunch of real estate transactions. I love that. And then what's your experience, Stuart, in terms of how you guys are leveraging your gifts and, and how that propels you guys in the right direction together? Yeah, I think, you know, we're, we are people who definitely when we partnered up, we, we, we check our ego at the door and we say, you know, what's, what, it, what is the bigger picture? Um, so ultimately, you know, when, if you're someone out there right now, who, whether you're a lender, real estate agent, you know, top agent, you know, and you want to expand your business, like you have to start with your why, you know, what, why do you want what you want and who do you want to be around? Who do you want to be in your picture? I think there are agents in our marketplace and every marketplace that are the lone ranger, solo, dolo, you know, what a, a female or male, um, who should remain that way. And they, they are, they, that way creates the most client value and creates the most uh, success for them. Um, but if you know that you're kind of missing that piece or have hit a plateau in your business, you, whether you're new or a five, 10, 50, $100 million producer, there's always more room to go in real estate. And if you're seeking that next level, you know, examine your why and examine, you know, who around you could help impact your business and could you impact theirs? And when you approach it, so, you know, Delroy briefly gave a synopsis of, you know, we're, we were helping each other for a year on events. What we were really dur- doing during that time is not worrying about money, right? We were, we were not concerned at all about, um, and uh, this is before we were partnering in real estate, but while we were working on that for Gen stuff, we were concerned about getting things done for our very new fledgling organization. And we, frankly, you know, against the counsel of our mentors, we didn't even have an operating agreement for a whole year. We didn't, we didn't even have anything on paper that, that said that, you know, I owned anything or Dell owned anything or that we, you know, were, were do anything that we were, it was, it was purely about the work. And when you approach it from that standpoint, especially for as long as we did, you really uncover who who the other people are around you and how they work together which you know to taking that and applying it to any one specific position doesn't mean you have to go create some nonprofit with someone else to feel them out and decide if they're a right partner but you do have to have the same intention behind it 
And if you don't, it's not worth it. We we've seen too many people try to force partnerships or what's even sadder for me is partnerships that you think will probably work out, but someone or both of the people have too much ego involved and, and just have decided that, you know, well, what happens when I close five deals this month and you bring in one, you know, who, who cares, frankly, who cares? It's about the bigger picture. If you're worried about that, you're going to be an individual agent forever because, um, you know, that, that is clearly where your values are and that's fine, but look at yourself in the mirror and decide. Yeah. Well, you just touched upon two really important things, which is that it is 100% okay, of course, to be a solo agent and have that be the, the business model. And that's the beautiful thing that's been a byproduct of the podcast is that the, the way in which you can run your business and find success in this industry can be completely unique to you. And the diversity in the industry is, is incredible. And it's what makes this business such a beautiful, a beautiful vehicle to, to kind of power your life with. Um, and I love that you talk about checking the ego at the door, because I do think that's a big, that's a big part of it, which is what ends up being the primary roadblock for folks that, that do desire to have the support or to build out the team, but then the ego gets in the way and it really crumbles quickly. Um, you mentioned against the advice of your mentors. So I'm curious because there are so many different ways to run a business successfully, whether it's with buyer's agents or assistants or business partners or solo agent, you know, where do you guys seek counsel? Where do you get your mentoring from? Yeah, we, we try and be pretty robust with, uh, with our mentors, like uh, people well outside of the real estate business, as well as people who are, top producers in the space. Um, I think at this point, you know, what, what I always like to say when this question comes around is like you, you, you like I have mentors who don't know they're my mentors. You know, yeah. I've, I've learned so much from other podcasts, other books, other resources, or other people who I'm just observing the way they've done business. Like for example, when I got into the business in 2016, I researched who all of the top agents were in Denver. And they didn't know me at all. They would, they would never know me. They have no reason to know me at all at that time. Um, but really, really studied how they maneuvered in the marketplace, took things that I thought could apply to me and left the rest. And I've been doing that since I was, you know, a a tiny kid. Um, and that, that is something that where I think people right now, there, there, a lot of people are like, especially in this time of COVID where you have all this time, you're filling your head with a lot of knowledge. Well, what are you applying actually? Mm-hmm. And if, you, if you're applying even 10% of the amount of stuff you're taking in from other people, you're going to be successful if you're listening to the right things. You don't have to have all these crazy connections to get the right kind of mentorship, in my opinion. Yeah, that's huge. What about you, Delroy? Yeah, really, same same approach. Um, I'm I'm a big component uh, of somebody who wants to have mentors around. I think it's actually the fastest way to grow your business, to be honest. It's, it's being able to not just study people, but to have those relationships with your peers from experienced agents. And I think one of the key things is is also to know what not to do, right? It's your, what the biggest thing for me having mentors and what Stuart said about studying other people in their business is you're going to actually not make mistakes that people are making. Like I said, I've gone through different phases and different time periods in my real estate career. Um, and I've learned what to do and what not to do. And a lot of the stuff that I don't do, I've never done it just because I've seen so many people try it and know that it doesn't work. So that helps you save time and helps you rapidly scale your business. Um, and it's actually a ton of what we've been able to do in the last two to three years. Now it's like, oh, everyone's doing this. And we're like, yeah, but I, I think this could be done. Uh, you know, and, that, and we've been able to rapidly grow by just implementing or not implementing things that people are doing in the marketplace. Awesome. So let's dig our teeth in a little bit to the sheer, you know, volume of business that you guys have been able to do over the years and and where your business is headed. And my question for you is that if folks are listening, and I would encourage you listeners to go for sure and find Delroy and Stuart on Instagram, because I know that I was personally astounded by 
what you're doing there. I love your brand. You're clearly attracting a lot of attention. Um, my question for you is, do you guys approach your business development strategy primarily uh, from your online presence? And do you attract business that way? Or are you finding that the growth of your online presence is more tied to you know launching the coaching side of the business? What I mean by that is when it comes to attracting clients, buyers and sellers, where do you guys put the most amount of your attention to, to grow your real estate business? And then we can kind of talk about how the growth of your online presence, has, is, is, that, is that the intention? Is that the focus or is that the byproduct? Does that question make sense? Yeah, no, 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 totally get it. So we, we did a full breakdown of our business. So last year we produced just over uh, 40 million in volume last year. And then this year we're trying to do 75. Um, and the 40 million was basically a double, just, just under double in our business from the prior year as individuals. Um, so the legs of our business in doing our, our planning for 2020, we really, really looked and broke all of that down. So primarily our main income and, and bit, sorry, not income, but lead source for our uh, real estate transactions is our sphere. Right, that is our people that we know that like and trust us, that refer us business. That's the biggest component of where we focus, where we spend money, where we market to events, and do everything that we do. Then you have our social media, and you have the referrals. Okay, so the, the and the, the referrals I'm talking about are from other agents. Sure, those that online and the referrals from other agents for us go hand in hand. Um, we've built our sphere and, and within the real estate community, mainly online, doing videos and educating people. Most of our followers on social media are other real estate agents. And what that does is give us the ability to cast a very, very wide net amongst our peers and help us if we have a new listing that we're going to throw out um, to the atmosphere and say, hey, do you have a buyer or seller? We do get other agents saying, hey, you know, I've got a client who may be interested in that property. So that creates transactions locally. But then we have tons of agents from across the country that follow us that are, oh, anytime they think of Denver, they want to just send a, a client directly to us because they feel like they know us already just from how we post. We're very authentic. We just post our natural selves on social media. Um, it is thought out and we do make sure, you know, we put out professional content. We want to put out content that matches our level of service that we offer our clients. And that's how we kind of approach the social media. Um, so those people kind of see that and then they're like, I want to send them, look at what they're doing in Denver. I want to give someone that I can trust and that's going to give a high level of service to my clients and they refer us people in as well. So then I suspect that the coaching organization, Agent Daily Dose, had to have evolved from the level of inquiries you were receiving from your peers around the country that that you just realize that there's a need that people are hungry for information and that you've got this platform with which you can help other agents do the same. Yeah, because we, yeah. we we shared a lot on our stories and 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 did a lot of stuff just organically. Anyway, we would we would post tips and tricks. We would we, we're always we're 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 the the types of individuals that are. Let's offer value. No matter to who or where or what platform we're using, we lead with value always. We just want to offer value, no matter if it's going to generate any income or not. Like We want to do something that's fun, cool, and is going to create some help and impact for the community. Okay. So yeah, and we... Go ahead, Stu. Just to elaborate on that a little bit further, like for, for Agent Daily Dose in, in, in particular... You know, we we also felt that um, there was kind of a gaping hole in the whole coaching market of, around real estate agents. That um, you know is one based on overpriced information, and two is based on information not being readily digestible and tangible for people to deploy, like at a moment's notice. And real estate. I mean, the fundamentals of real estate haven't changed, you know, really ever, right? Like the, the, the need for someone to be face to face with you through this process, I think is, is not going away and hasn't gone away. Um, but everything else has pretty much changed <laughs> the way it's done, how communicate, how information is communicated, um, and how 
uh, consumers perceive real estate agents. And all of those things, um, I think, are things that we have proven, Delroy and I have proven in our own business to be really good at, uh, at pivoting and adapting to and leveraging. Um, frankly, there's no way that I could be where I am in my career having moved here three and a half years ago and not knowing anyone. Um, to being rookie of the year, you know, basically two years later, if, if I wasn't really good at, at using those things. And so we thought, let's make a low cost model for people to, you know, share that information and also build a community around that information. Um, and so I, I think it's, it's, it's been very interesting to see who has, has latched on and how it's grown, um, in this kind of early stage. Sorry. And one, one more, one more point is that the blunt the blunt truth as well is that we've we've gone and spoken to so many people and and the the chatter around how we do business and how we operate is a lot of the times like oh what are those guys doing now or social media doesn't really work or oh, I'm a top producer I'm killing it and like you, I don't do anything on social media like you don't have to and it's just that they've built their business at a completely different time and era like, if think about right now and today, ex- what's happening in the world and think that you don't need to use technology and you don't need to understand how technology works. Imagine when we come out of this crisis right now and the people that were already using technology or understood technology a lot more, like we're rapidly pumping out content all the time anyway to our database. They're just, we're in front of them. Right now, people are going to take two, three months to figure out how to like FaceTime their friend for the first ever time um, and like have a conversation with them. So the the top producers that have been in the business for 20 years were sometimes feeding information from their experience, but it's not actually relevant in this market today. Awesome. So one of my questions for you is, as you're navigating the level, the sheer level of tasks that are associated with the level of transactions that you're doing, um, how do you manage your social media in such a way that it's being put out consistently? Do you outsource any aspect of your social media management? Or are you guys just literally doing what Gary Vaynerchuk would advise and just documenting all day? everything? Like, are you just constantly putting the content out there or do you have it scheduled or outsourced in some way? Yeah, I think like we, we both believe authenticity, uh, beats out frequency. And what I mean by that is, you know, if, if, if I, we, we don't have a scheduler, we don't outsource our content. We, we, we do it all in house and we, we post it ourselves. And if we didn't do that, even if we got more content out the door, which we would probably be the case, um, the impact of the whole would be far, far less. So ultimately, you know, we, we try and really do as good of a job as we can. And some weeks and months are better than others, right? And like today, for example, I haven't posted, I don't even know if I've done a story, you know, and that's like, I, I usually am all over that. But at the same time, you know, other things come up and you have to adapt. As long as I'm consistent enough that my audience isn't going anywhere, um, which for me is probably two to three static posts a week and then stories um, as frequently as I can on a daily level, I'm good. That my, my people will stay around. My, my, my views don't go down, like all that stuff. I still get the same amount of direct messages. So it was, as long as you're authentic with it, then that's, that is the right way to go. Um, so we're we're way more in the Gary V kind of uh, camp than than anything else, I would say. And are you primarily focused on Instagram, or are you also leveraging Facebook, Twitter, YouTube? All, 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 all of the above. And, I, and can I just say, it's pro- we we look like we pump out a lot of content because ninety percent of people don't do it. Like we actually don't pump out a lot of content compared to the people that we know actually do pump out a lot of content, right? It's most real estate agents or lenders or whatever business they're in are struggling to do one post every three months. Like that's that's the level that we're competing against, right? Mm-hmm. So if we post, honestly, if any 
agent watching this, any lender, if you post once a week, you are probably posting 80% more than your competition. So it's going to seem like to everyone, oh, wow, you're posting so much. You're so online. You're so social. That it's going to seem like you're making a big impact, right? So that's really why it looks like we're doing a lot. Like Stu said, we post maybe three times a week. You know, there'll be some weeks where there's a ton more and some weeks maybe there's nothing because we're just too busy doing other things and we just kind of just do it naturally now within our schedule whenever we feel like it. But we're not, it doesn't take up and consume a lot of time, to be honest. It, it really doesn't. It's very on and off, quickly post and, and you're done and then you're on to the next thing. But, I mean, we could, there's no way for us to, if anyone's looking at this and watching this, you, we did, I, I think, just over 60 transactions last year we, we're not spending our days just sitting in front of our social media account <laughs> right it's just not happening awesome well i appreciate you sharing a little bit behind the curtain there because there are a lot of us and i say us because i feel like i'm still i mean i feel like so novice with everything social media and just winging it half the time so there's a lot of us that are just simply curious about how you go about garnering attention so i just appreciate your authenticity and sharing kind of the behind the scenes there um what I'm curious about sharing with the listeners is tell us more about what is what is Agent Daily Dose beyond the text? Like you mentioned a membership. I mean, what can people expect to get from signing up with Agent Daily Dose from a cost perspective, from a, you know, frequency, et cetera? Go ahead, Del. It's uh, so, okay. So it, you basically you sign up for a membership and you get daily text messages. So me and Stu, our brainstorming sessions that we have, you know, similar to stuff like this that we're talking about, but we, we're forward thinking with the info. So, you know, what's happening in the marketplace? What marketing strategies are we coming up with? What stuff are our mentors that have been in the business for 20 years telling us? How would we, you know, change and incorporate that into our business? So it's really our, our brain bubbles um, sent through a text message to everyone that subscribes to the service. So they're getting tidbits, they're getting motivation, they're getting action items to do every single day, they're getting mindset, re- um, and then they're getting growth methods and marketing tips. So all of this is delivered. It may be a, a web link, it may be a PDF, it may be an image, it may be just some text. And then there's a members area that they can log into and really go back and look at all the archives. Um, and dig out and, you know, print stuff off and really implement uh, stuff that is going to be relevant for immediate growth, right? This is stuff that you're going to implement and you're going to start seeing results um, and generating business and leads and also telling you the mindset that you need to get into to become a top producer. Because some, I think some people forget that, that, you know, they think, oh, yeah, I'm just going to sign up to this program and just leads are going to start flowing in because I tell everyone that I hate what I do in life um, on social media and that just isn't going to help you gain any business. So it's also, you know, that reset, you know, positive thinking, everything that we kind of believe in and our philosophy and what people have reached out to us for, for years. And we're basically sharing that to everyone for $8 a month. $8 a month, people. $8 a month. That's, that's incredible. So yeah, you guys, everybody needs to go and find these guys, follow them, consume, sign up, register, all the things, because who doesn't need more positivity and more strategy and tactics in their lives? So guys, Delroy, tell us where can folks find you, reach out to you, connect with you, et cetera. Yeah, all of our social medias, log on to Instagram, Facebook, just search our names and you'll find us there. Agent Daily Dose is agentdailydose.com. It's the website. That's where you can go on. There will be a promo code called Aaron. If you plug that promo code in, you will get 30 days free trial to test it out, you know, and, and see the kind of value that we're trying to offer people with the text messages. Right now, we're also hosting a Zoom call every Thursday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. And really doing brainstorming sessions of how people can adapt and thrive in this market that we're in right now, right? Because we really believe that in this time that we're in, this could happen at any time. A slowdown in real estate, especially if you're a new agent, you're going to have ups and downs in your business, right? So you have to be prepared for stuff like this and you need to know what tasks and what things you need to proactively be doing and what activities to do on a daily basis. 
whether you're swamped with business or you have a time like this where it's a slow moment, there's always things you should be working on um, in your real estate business. I love it. How about you, Stuart? How can people find you, connect with you, et cetera? Yeah. So same way. Uh, I'll just, you know, social media is our first name, last name. And and if you uh, follow us there and send us a direct message, we will get back to you. We're very good about responding to, to everybody um, as well. If you want a little bit more on our team, go to live, L-I-V-E, distinct.com. Um, and that'll kind of showcase a little more about our brand. You can see some of our videos and, and how we do things. Um, and yeah, we're, we're happy to connect with anybody and especially in this wacky time in the world, you know, we, we really believe in, um, real estate advisors being, uh, really the, the true positive beacons in our community and, and being there for others right now. And, and that's, you know, the, the impact of doing that in today's world is gonna, is gonna, you know, grow fruit for your business for years and years to come. Um, so, you know, everyone out there is listening, keep staying the course. And, uh, you know, if you want kind of to be a part of our community and our tribe of agents who, who are trying to use this time to grow and leverage and, and, and really deploy some new strategies, um, agent daily dose is, is definitely for you. I love it. I love it all. So thank you guys so, so much for taking the time to be with me today and with our listeners. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, as always, I love and appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in today. Be sure to find Delroy and Stu wherever you are consuming content. And speaking of consuming content, you know how much I would appreciate it if you would leave a review for the podcast wherever you are consuming this because it continues to help us attract amazing people that are doing such wonderful things for our industry like Delroy and Stu and helps this content get found so that people can continue to be inspired and find the strategies and the ideas they need to implement to continue on their own journey and your journey. So here's to your continued success and happiness. And as always, contact me at pursuingfreedom.com forward slash contact if I can be a resource to you in any way. I'm here for you and I'm cheering for you and I believe in you. So make it an awesome day.